Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now I'm really excited because a new version of the Ubuntu Linux distribution has just been released. It's Ubuntu 18.04 and I've downloaded it and I want to give you an overview of the desktop version and a quick look at some of the things that have changed since uh, the previous version. So if you want to find out more about Ubuntu 18.04, please let me explain. Okay, so let's just quickly talk about the versioning. It's 18.04, not because there have been 18 versions before that, but because it's 2018.04 because we're in the month of April. There'll be another release in six months time, which will be 18.10 .10 for October. And then again, it repeats in April and so on. And the really important thing about 18.04 is an LTS release. That's a long-term support release, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. Now the first thing you need to do is go over to ubuntu.com and if we do go to the Ubuntu website let's just mention the minimum requirements for you just so that you know uh, what you need to have uh, to get this up and running. So if we go to the Ubuntu website okay and if you say I want Ubuntu desktop it says what you need is a 2 gigahertz dual processor that will be a 64-bit processor 2 gigabytes of memory and 25 gigabytes of hard disk now I've done this booting it into a virtual machine of course you could burn yourself a DVD and then boot it from that and of course you can do it from USB and there's a whole bunch of instructions on how you can do it from USB if you look down here for Windows, if you're a Windows user, how to burn a DVD, how to create a bootable stick. Let's just quickly look at that. And here it does, it gives you the step by step uh, things that you need to do to actually, you know, download and install and run. And here they're recommending you use Rufus as the tool for creating a USB stick. And then like my other video, which I will link uh, here in the corner, you can then actually run uh, Ubuntu from a flash disk, from a USB stick, and then it won't change anything on your computer and it gives you a good chance to play with it. Okay, now that we've looked at the minimum requirements and the installation process, now let's have a look at some of the things that are new in this version and then take a look at the desktop. Okay, so here the desktop with the screensaver running. I need to type in my password to get in to the desktop. And what you see here is the web browser running and I'm looking at the release note and the release announcement for Bionic Beaver. Let's just quickly go through some of the important highlights of this. The first one to note is that this is a LTS release, which means long-term support. And look at this here, the main archive of Ubuntu 18.4 LTS will be supported for five years until 2023. So that's a really good reason to pick an LTS release over any other releases. You get five years worth of bug fixes and security updates. That means if you're looking to make an investment into a permanent system, whether it be a server or a desktop, and you need to know that it's gonna keep on being supported, you definitely need to choose the LTS release. A couple of a few things to look at is that this now uses Linux kernel uh, 4.15 and also the Open JDK, that's a Java development kit. As of 18.4, the Open uh, JDK default is 10, version 10. But in September, look here, 2018, they're expecting version 11 to be out and then that will become the default for uh, the long-term support over the next, what's that, four and a half years. And then a couple of other work, things worth mentioning here is there was a whole bit of uh, discussion with the history of Ubuntu about which uh, display server it would use. Now X is now the default display server. And Wayland, which is now in technical preview, is expected to become the default display server in 20.04. Uh, so that's in 2020, April of 2020. And now since, of course, 16.04, um, that was the last uh, LTS support. Now they've switched over to using GNOME as the default, direct, um, default uh, desktop. So that's basically the really big changes. Also, it's worth noting here, that LibreOffice has been upgraded to version 6. Okay, so let's just close that down and let's have a very quick tour of Ubuntu. Here on the left-hand side is kind of your taskbar with things pinned, pinned already to it. So you've got the web browser, which we're already in, then you've got Thunderbird for email, then you've got a basically a file explorer 
that will come up and show you all the different folders you've got on your computer and where you can find all your files. Here you've got Rhythmbox, which is their standard uh, MP3 uh, music player. Then here you have LibreOffice. Now I haven't started this up yet. Let's see how quickly this starts up and whether it asks me some initial startup questions. Okay, that's good. So it's gone straight to that. As you can see, a very familiar word processing uh, environment. In fact, this is a very, very comprehensive uh, word processor. You also get a spreadsheet and you also get a, a presentation uh, software. Here is where you can download. This is kind of the same, the equivalent of kind of, you know, the Play Store or iTunes or, you know, whatever Microsoft's thing is called. This is where you download apps. It's called, uh, you can look at all the different things here. Uh, Ubuntu software, you can look at all the different things here, you know, including Skype and Slack and a Discord uh, client, and you can divide it up into different categories. You can just check to see what's under graphics and photography, for example, and you can download those. You might be more interested in productivity, so you can look at what things you can get under productivity and so on. So this is where you kind of your main place to kind of install everything. And then also notice here, Amazon is included, and that's I'm sure because, of course, there is some sponsorship going on which helps keep um, the Ubuntu uh, open source and free. And, of course, it is open source, but you know what I mean. Uh, keeps it all uh, running because obviously there are engineers that need to be paid and uh, support needs to be provided and so on. So Amazon have kind of got a sponsored link in here. Then if you the app you want isn't one of these ones here on the left, then you can click down here to the show applications. And this will bring up this... Um, a window where you can pick other things like the start menu if you're from a Windows world where you can pick the different types of software you want you know you can click on the calculator and up that will come and of course you've got lots typed in here you can actually lots installed you can just type in you know calculator and it will just find what you're looking for uh, very very quickly so there you go that's a quick overview if you wanted to run a terminal you go down here we would type in term for terminal Okay, and now we can start running some of the commands, new name minus A. So here we can see that it's running the kernel 4.15. I'm running it as a 64-bit version. Oh, talking about it being a 64-bit version, uh, there are no longer any 32-bit versions available for uh, the desktop. The idea being that 64-bit processors have been around for several years now, and most people have probably got a 64-bit processor, so they've saved themselves some time and effort there by not having to support the 32-bit uh, versions as well, so 64-bit version would be good for you. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video. I think Ubuntu 18.04 is gonna be a great release. If you wanna build yourself kind of like servers at home or maybe some workstations or you've got media players you want to build, using this version is really, really useful because you know you can get that five years worth of support. So it's the version that I'm gonna be using from now on for the next few years for all the different things I kind of do in my house. I've got a Plex media server and so on. I'm definitely gonna be using Ubuntu 18.04. My name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please leave a comment below and tell me what you think about Ubuntu 18.04, what you think about Linux. Do you want to see more videos about it? Let me know in the comments below. You also know what I'm going to ask you. Please subscribe. Please become part of our notification squad and please share this video on social media. Okay, that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.